So what I'm doing here today is I'm making up another short cable. When I made my cables to take the tree down years ago, I bought a roll of cable. It might have been 150 feet long or so. I made one long cable, one about half as long, and a couple of short chokers about six foot long. Most of the time I can find a tree within the reach of one of those two cables to hook up my come along. But not always. <laughs> I just hooked the cable to one of the big pines. I stretched out the long cable and I don't have enough reach to get to a suitable tree to hook to. So I did have some cable here and I'm hooking up another short one. This one will probably be about, I don't know, 12 to 16 foot long when I'm done. I don't have any collars to put in here, but this will be fine just the way it is. Now, when I'm hooking my cable clamps, I double them up. It's probably not needed, but when I'm putting a lot of tension on a cable, I need that tree to, su to surrender to the tension on the cable and come in the direction that I want to pull it in. Doubling this up, it's just for my own peace of mind. I've never had one fail. So I'm going to get this put together, get it hooked up, get one of those pines down. Since this tree is wider than the length of the bar on my saw, giving myself a line to follow will help me cut my notch more accurately. When the notch is cut, Mama increases the tension on the cable and I start the back cut. I'll cut a little, she'll add more tension, and we'll repeat the process until the tree is leaning in the right direction, and not on my shed like it is now. <laughs> Once the tree has passed the tipping point, the come along becomes a lot easier to crank. Looks like it's mission accomplished. One down, two to go. Well, folks, it's a beautiful spring day. Just uh, taking a little time off the projects, trekking around the woods. The black flies are starting to pop. So, able to get out today and not be bugged too bad. Uh, I'm just down in the beaver swamps. This is where I had shared a little bit of footage of the beaver was coming out of the ice in the winter, clipping a few twigs for himself. Well, I'm happy to see that he's still here and he's gotten quite a pond established and if people leave him alone he'll make some nice trout waters for me. So anyway I just pulled my SD cards and uh, hopefully I got a little bit of beaver footage to share with you. Yeah I'll show you what he's doing over here. He's got quite the dam set up out there. Big long dam that goes for a hundred yards or better. So he's been a busy little beaver and you can see he's got the water all backed up here and that's his lodge right there yeah so some wood ducks took off when i was walking down in a lot of wildlife come to the beaver pond yeah they're not a good fit for everywhere that they decide to colonize but out here in the woods a situation like this are very beneficial. They make nesting sites for waterfowl and uh, the moose come down and eat water plants and they make trout waters for me so they're very good. I like having them around. Well, if you don't believe that beavers are beneficial to the ecosystem, then come along as I check my trail cams and see for yourself. 
Lots of wildlife gravitate to the beaver ponds. There's a raccoon foraging for food below the dam. He's out during the day without a care in the world. I was hoping to set my camera where I could get some close-ups of the deer that frequent the pond. <laughs> Looks like I chose a good spot. <laughs> The camera on the shoreline got some activity too, but it appears the wild turkey has no interest in being popular on YouTube. Looks like the deer has no need for fame and fortune either. And another familiar face, who feels just about the same as the turkey and the deer. <laughs> Now there's the beaver, working the night shift again. Maintaining a pond is a lot of work and it needs constant attention. The spring rain raises the water level, which creates leaks in the dam. Leaks that need to be fixed, so he fixes them with great success. Success is found when you stay busy, busy as a beaver, so that's what he does. There's another deer, curious about that red light on the camera, so she's sniffing the wind trying to identify her intruder. There's the beaver again, being busy as he should, creating a habitat for everyone to enjoy. I know I surely do. I'm grateful he decided to colonize here. I strung this cable last year for the bird feeders. I wasn't sure if the squirrels would tightrope walk it. They are. A few of them are. Most of them stay right on the ground here. We don't have any problem. But when they tightrope walk and they get here and they just gorge themselves and keep repeating it, <laughs> that's not flying around here. So I'm going to make a couple little squirrel deflectors to put on the cable. And I found just what I needed at the dump. I'll show you. Yeah, you can buy these cones that you put on pole feeders and stuff, but they're, they're ridiculous money. I'm not going to make a cone. I'm just going to cut a circle out of this and make a little slice and slide it over the cable and put one on each end. I had a little piece of flashing up there. In fact, people have seen it in my videos and wondered what it was. And I just put up a little piece of flashing and that was keeping the chipmunks and the red squirrel from going beyond it. But the gray squirrels are hopping over it. So I'm going to give them something bigger to hop. <laughs> I got my stenciling device here. Now I could just leave this as a square. But I just think the circles will look better. <laughs> After all, it's right out my window, you know. I'm always looking out the window at the feeders. I'll put these up, see how they work. When I run the next cable, I'm going to put those things on first and put a couple of cable stops, keep that in place. But so far, so good. I think that'll work. Well, folks, I just missed a Kodak moment. I look out the window and there's a squirrel tightrope walking the cable. He gets to the baffle, he goes to jump over it, it spins, he falls. But he's, he grabbed the cable with his hind legs, with his hind feet, and he's hanging there, trying to ride himself. He's trying to grab the baffle. It keeps spinning. He finally quit and jumped to the ground. Then he was trying to get back up, 
I got the camera and I went to film, but Tildy's always up on the back of the couch. She loves bird watching. She watches those squirrels all day like a cat would. It's really funny. So she got dog snot all over the window. We, we wash that window daily or every other day. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I tried to go outside with the camera and the squirrel run off. So I have a feeling I'm going to get some interesting stuff in the near future, which, of course, I will share with you. All right, let's wrap up this episode with just a couple questions and a comment or two. Have you ever thought about a portable mill for endless lumber? Now, I covered this question before, but I just got it again. But I wanted to answer it again because, no, I, I don't think about a portable sawmill because all I can think about is geothermal heating and cooling. <laughs> You guys are always bringing that up again. You enjoyed that episode, and I had a lot of fun making it. But to be serious about it, yes, I dreamed about having a sawmill since I was a kid. And I finally fulfilled that dream and bought a sawmill when I was around 40 years old. It was pretty cool to have, but with every dream, with every fantasy, there's a reality. And one of the realities to having a sawmill is... The blades don't sharp, stay sharp very long. And if you don't have your own sharpening equipment, you're going to have to hire somebody to sharpen the blades. And if you don't have somebody local to sharpen the blades, you're going to have to send out your blades. Um, there's a lot of upkeep. I, I kept the mill for, I don't know, maybe 10 years or so, and then I sold it. And I found it was easier for me just to hire somebody. And I talked about that before, but the question just came up. I wanted to bring it up because there's a lot of guys like you dreaming about a sawmill. And it has its pros and cons. And that's one of the cons is having to continually sharpen those blades. Okay, next one. There's a lot of concern about the gas tank. I showed that old gas tank that I'm gonna make a grill. Like here, aren't you worried about the gas fumes and all the toxins in that tank? Well, no, not worried whatsoever, because that tank has been laying out there a long, long time, folks. It hasn't seen gas in probably 60 years or better. It's got a big rusted hole in it. There's no fumes or anything in that tank. Now, I'm going to be 57 this year, and that tank has been laying out there longer than I've been on this planet. But nonetheless, once I make the, the grill... Uh, I'm going to burn a fire in there, burn it all out, and then I'm going to line it. I've got lots of plans for that. It's not on my priority list of to-dos, but when I do work on it, I will, of course, share it with you. Yeah, and I, it's going to be a pretty cool project. Okay, why don't you just buy some new gloves? <laughs> Been getting that question lately. Now, what do you mean? These are my new gloves. <laughs> All right, let's talk about work gloves just for a little bit. These were given to me by a friend. They were brand new, of course, for, for me to try out because he really loves them. And I love these things. Now, work gloves, I don't care how much money they cost, they don't last very long on my hands. I work hard and I work a lot. I'm always doing stuff, okay? These gloves, I love them and I'm going to buy some more. The price isn't too bad. Um, they're not bulky. They're very, very comfortable right out of the box. And they are very durable. You're not going to be, you're probably doubting it by looking at these. But again, I use them uh, silly. Now, when we were dragging brush and burning brush this winter, these things were soaked through. We're working out in the rain and the snow. Regardless of how soaking wet these were, my hands stayed warm. Um, they're great. The dexterity is really good for a work glove. You've heard me talk about these gloves before, these Atlas Thermofits. These still are my favorite gloves. I just ordered another dozen pair. Now, these don't last forever, but these are a fraction of the price of these. The dexterity is fantastic with these. You can snap a chalk line, grab a nail out of your pouch. They're fairly warm for as thin as they are. They will wear out. Depends on how hard you work and how much you work. But I, I would, if I didn't love them as much as I do, I wouldn't have just ordered another dozen pair. 
So the work gloves, there's lots of talk about the come along, questions about the come along that you see me use. And whenever you, you sh I show you the trail cam footage, there's a lot of questions about the trail cams. So those links are going to be in the description below. Now, I was going to order some more trail cams and I was looking up reviews of different ones. And I thought about investing in some more expensive ones. And really, the reviews that I'm finding, even on the expensive ones, are very similar to the review of these cheapos that I buy. The cameras I buy run $50 to $70. Very affordable cameras. All the footage you've been watching are taken from these. The footage that you just saw, all the nighttime stuff, are these cheap cameras. The only thing I don't like about these cameras is when it's on the video setting, they seem to be a little bit sluggish. They're not sensitive enough where a critter will walk into the scene and get to about the center of the scene and then it starts taping. So you see it from the center of the scene out. I wish it was more sensitive. But looking up other cameras in the $225 range, I was finding the exact same reviews that they were filming like the hind end of the deer or something. So I'm going to order more of these. They get stolen. It doesn't hurt as much as when you lose a couple hundred dollar camera. So that's something to take into consideration when you're buying cameras. All right. You guys had me cracking up. Um, over the uh, guesses you were putting in for the gas tank. And uh, there's some pretty funny stuff. A lot of people saying that I was going to make my bug out box out of the tank and stuff like that. <laughs> but in regards to bugging off, this was a comment that uh, I'm going to quote you here. And it was really good. From what I can see, the guys buggering off must be preparing for something called the a porker lips. Best stay away from them, fellas. <laughs> That's right out of deliverance, isn't it? <laughs> now, you guys are confusing me. I, I'm not up on the new ter terminology. Some people are going, well, I, I'm not really sure what you're going to make out of the fuel cell. And I'm like, fuel cell? They were talking about the gas tank. Well, I can't keep up with all the new terminology. <laughs> What to me is a gas tank is now a fuel cell. And when I look at a catalog, I see all these different hydration packs. We used to call it a canteen. When I was a little kid, there was a cabin down the road here that had a sign on the gable that read, Our Gay Abode. It was hung there when gay meant happy and taken down when it meant otherwise. <laughs> what used to be curtains and paint it's now <laughs> window treatments and wall applications, and it costs you a bloody fortune to decorate your house. I don't know. <laughs> okay, before I close this for this week, if you like the contents of my channel, maybe you learn something useful, or you get entertained, you get a chuckle or two, by all means, please share it with others that we'll enjoy it as well. It would mean a lot to me. Share the love. I'd appreciate it. All right? So all the best to you, and God bless. Frankie and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss